Dov Yomi, track date Bava Kama, page 94b, top of the page, with the words Imru Halacha Karabi Shimon ben Elazar. Some said that the Halacha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, but Shmuel himself does not hold accordingly. The Gemara continues the discussion of acquisition of, stolen, of a stolen item due to a change it underwent. Rabbi Chia Bar Abbas says that, Rabbi Yochanan says, by Torah law, a stolen item that has changed is returned as is, as it is stated, and he shall restore that which he took by robbery. Leviticus 5.23 This indicates that he shall return it in any case, even if it has been changed. And if you say in our Mishnah, it is stated that if the stolen item is changed, the robber gives monetary compensation rather than returning the item. That policy was instituted by the sages due to the ordinance instituted for the penitent. The Gemara asks, but did Rabbi Yochanan actually say that? But doesn't Rabbi Yochanan say the halacha is in accordance with the with an unattributed Mishnah? And we learned in a Mishnah with regard to first of the shared wool. Rashid Hagez. In Hulin 135a, if the owner of the sheep did not manage to give the shared wool to the priest before he died it, he is exempt from giving it to the priest. This indicates that dying the wool is a significant change. One of the rabbis, whose name was Rabbi Yaakov, said to them, It was explained to me directly by Rabbi Yochanan that he was referring to a case where he robbed another of sanded wood and fashioned it into vessels, which is a change in which the item can revert to its original state. Consequently, the robber does not acquire the item by Torah law but rather due to the ordinance instituted for the penitent. Having mentioned the ordinance instituted for the penitent, the Gemara discusses other details of this ordinance. The sage is taught in a brighta to Sefta Shavit 811. With regard to robbers or usurers that have returned either the stolen item or the interest to the one from whom they took it, one should not accept it from them. And with regard to one who does accept it from them, our, the sages are displeased with him, since by doing so, he discourages those who wish to repent. Rabbi Yochanan says, this Mishnah, that is, the statement of the Tosefta was up in the days of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. As it is taught in a Brita, there was an incident with regard to one man who desired to repent after having been a thief for many years. His wife said to him, Empty one, Reka, if you repent, you will have to return all the stolen items to their rightful owners, and even the belt that you are wearing is not yours. And he refrained and did not repent. At that time, the sages said, with regard to, to robbers or usurers, that returned either the stolen item or the interest to the one from whom they took it, one should not accept it from them. And concerning one who does not accept it from them, the sage who does accept it from them, the sages are displeased with him. I don't understand why you should you should return it. Why shouldn't you accept it? They are doing you. I understand. Okay, anyway. The Gemara raises an objection from a bride with regard to children whose deceased father left them money, paid his interest, although they know that it is interest, they are not obligated to return it. 
the Gemara, the Gemara infers they, the children, are the ones that are not obligated to return it, but their father would have been obligated to return it, and his victims may accept his money. The Gemara responds by right, the Brita should have taught that their father also would not have been obligated to return it. And the fact that the Brita teaches this halacha with regard to the children is because of the fact that the Brita wants to teach a halacha in the latter clause. If their deceased father left them a cow or a garment or any other specific item, he had stolen or taken as interest, they are obligated to return it due to the honor of their father so that the item not serve as a remainder to all that their father transgressed. Since this halakha needs to be stated specifically with regard to, to the children, the first clause of the brita is also taught with regard to them. The Gemara asks, but is it true that due to the honor of their father, they're obligated to return the item or money. I will read here the verse, You shall not revile God nor curse the ruler of your people. Exodus 22.27, from which the sages inferred, the prohibition against cursing a ruler is in effect only with regard to a ruler that acts as a member of your people. That is, in accordance with Torah law, one who curses a wicked ruler does not violate this prohibition. Similarly, if one if one's father is wicked, the mitzvah to honor him should not apply. Why would his children have to return items that he stole due to his honor? The Gemara responds, It is like that which Rav, Pinius, Rav Pinchas said concerning a different case. In this case, where he repented, here, too, is a case where the father repented. And since he is no longer wicked, his children are obligated to honor him. The Gemara asks, if he repented, what was the stolen item of interest doing with him? He should have returned it while it was while he was still alive. The Gemara responds, it is a case where he did not manage to return it before he died. Consequently, the children must return the items in order to uphold their father's honor. The Gemara raises another contradiction. Tashima, come in here. The statement of another bright set with regard to robbers and users, although they collected the stolen item of interest, they return it. Although, they, I mean, I would think, yeah, it's a no-brainer. No? Anyway, the Gemara first clarifies the meaning of the bright set. In the case of the robbers, what collection is there? In other words, why did the bright to use the term collected in this context. If they robbed, they robbed and did not collect anything. If they did not rob, they did not rob and cannot, and cannot be called robbers at all. Rather, amend the text of the Brita to say, with regard to robbers and who are they, in other words, what is meant by the term robbers? It is referring to usurers, those who lend on interest. The Gemara resumes its citation of Brita. Although they collected the interest, they must return it. This is contrary to the ruling of the Tosefta that if robbers and usurers return what they have taken, it is not accepted. The Gemara explains, say that this Brita means that they return it, but one does not accept it from them. The Gemara asks, but why do they return it if it will not be accepted? The Gemara responds, in order to fulfill their obligation to heaven, in order to fully repent, they must at least offer to return to the debtors the interest they took unlawfully. The Gemara raises a contradiction from another source. Come in here, the statement of another Brita with regard to shepherds who allow their animals to graze in other people's fields, thereby stealing from the owners or tax collectors who are hired to collect taxes on behalf of the government and collect excessive sums, or tax collectors who purchase the right to collect taxes themselves and collect unlawfully, their repentance is difficult. Since they steal from the public, it is difficult for them to find every one of their victims 
in order to pay them restitution, and they must return what they have stolen to whomever they recognize as victims of their theft. This bright indicates that thieves do return what they have stolen. Gamora answers, say that they return it, but one does not accept it from them. The Gemara asks, but why do they return it if it will not be accepted? The Gemara responds, in order to fulfill their obligation to heaven. The Gemara asks, if so, if they are not actually obligated to return what they have stolen, then why is their repentance difficult? And furthermore, say the latter clause of the Brita, and as for the money belonging to those that they did not recognize as their victims, they should use that money for community needs. As Andrew Chizda says, this means providing pits, dishes, and caves which benefit the general public. This indicates that a thief actually does pay back what he has stolen. Rather, this contradiction must be resolved differently. It is not difficult. Here, where the bride states that he must actually return what he has stolen, is referring to a time before the ordinance of the penance, for the penitent was instituted. There, where the bride states that one does not accept the repayment from a robber is referring to a time after the ordinance was instituted. The Gemara adds, and now Rav, Rav, that Rav Nachman says that when Rav the sages say that he does not return what he has stolen, they refer to only a case where the stolen item does not exist in its initial form, and you can even say that this and that, both bright out, are referring to a time after the ordinance was instituted, and it is not difficult. 